Uh, Ronald, the rules lawyer here. I am going to be walking through how to GM with Foundry Virtual Tabletop with some folks who are our GMs but are want to go through a tutorial of how to use the system. So there's going to be timestamps. This is going to be a long video, so I'm going to put timestamps in the video for certain uh, things. And uh, this should be a useful resource, I think, compared with my previous video, which goes over the modules to install. We're going to go over some modules now, but this is going to be a walkthrough. Uh, it's best uh, if you are watching this while having your own installation of Foundry, because that's what uh, the folks I'm talking to have, and I'm going to be actually walking through how to do things that are uh, very um, quality of life enhancing for GMs. And also just explain the basics. What What is this? What do players see on their end? Uh, how to navigate the interface, things like that. So briefly, uh, Sean, um, uh, say who you are and why you're doing this tutorial. Well, I'm not giving the tutorial, I'm taking it, but- uh, Oh, I'm anyway. sorry. Sean, <laughs> say again who you are and why you're um, doing this tutorial. Well, I mean, well, doing, I see what you're saying. Go ahead. Well, anyway, um, I'm Sean, and I'm taking this tutorial because I want to swap a home game over to Foundry, and because I'm going to be GMing for that community game that we have going on the Discord server, link on screen and in description. Yes, yes, and I'm going to put my little subscribe animation to my, subscribe to my channel, and also uh, join our Discord. And like, and hit the bell, and also comment. Correct. <laughs> okay. All right, and Eric? Uh, sure. My name is Eric, and uh, I was in the Marshalls First Casters First event where I played the monk of Pantsgate Infamy, <laughs> and I also uh, GM a lot, and I'm looking to GM more Pathfinder 2, and as such, I wanted to learn how to use the uh, clearly most highly recommended way to run it. Yeah. And yeah. Okay, thank you. And then Oliver. Uh, yeah, I'm Oliver. I was also in the Casters versus Marshall event, the second one. Uh, no pants, Kate, just spider climb. <laughs> uh, I'm also doing this because I've been recommended Foundry mostly by the community. Uh, and I'm also going to run in the GM in the community game. Cool. Uh, in the Tales of the Endless Tavern campaign. Yeah. So thank you for uh, participating in this. And um, so what we'll do, um, generally when I teach something, I go from the general to the more specific as things come up. And uh, so Foundry is a virtual tabletop where a GM <clears throat> gets to play online with other with players. And the GM needs to have Foundry installed. It's a $50 one-time fee. And why uh, Pathfinder GMs, but also D&D GMs like Foundry is because it's customizable on your end. Um, you host the game on either your personal computer or through one of the cloud services, so you're not limited by, say, Roll20's bandwidth or storage capacity. You can have like a lot of stuff stored. And also, you can customize your installation to have exactly the features that you want. And uh, there's a very, very lively and active constantly working modding community that's like a 24 7 technical support on their discord uh, for a whole, dozens of different game systems and the um, the modules are frequently being updated and for pathfinder 2e it's often seen in the community as um, the best by far uh, vtt for that system there's been a very active community that's been actively making the, that game playable in foundry so in our dark corner of the internet, there are many, many people. So um, the uh, so when you're in a, uh, you, you see the game on your screen, I'm, I'm gonna explain things as we go, but the, what the players see is completely under the GM's control. So that's true in terms of the map, in terms of the names of monsters on the screen, whatever you can think of. Okay, so uh, all right, so the first step is to uh, cr create a world. Um, and before you do that, you have to install a game system. So all of the people today, um, there'll be parts of this today's tutorial that are Pathfinder specific. So um, uh, while the rest is general, 
and everyone today has already installed the game system Pathfinder 2nd Edition. This button here is to install the system, and they're all free, and there are dozens and dozens of systems that you can install, including D&D 5th Edition, um, many uh, other systems that the modding community has made. Then you create a world, and this is where your various campaigns are. And let's, uh, I'm gonna, for the purposes of, st of this tutorial, have a world called Tutorial. And uh, when you create a world, you just give it a name. You give it a path on your server where all of its files will be, uh, will be and you assign it a game system. So uh, I've already created a tutorial which has Pathfinder 2nd Edition as its game system. Another thing to do is uh, installing modules, uh, which can add features to your, your virtual tabletop. So here you click on Add-on Modules, and I already have a bunch of them installed on my screen. Uh, but uh, if you want to add modules at the bottom left, now Eric, I believe, is the one who has not installed any modules yet, right? That is correct. I okay, have great. So let's walk through this. Um, on the bottom left, click Install Module. Tell me when you've done something. I have done so, yes. Okay, and then you'll see the um, all of the modules, and you can see there looks like over a thousand packages that you could install. The first uh, one we'll want to install is Tidy UI. And uh, this is going to be helpful. It's a very good module for people who are going to be incorporating a lot of modules, which is pretty much nearly everybody, uh, because it makes uh, changing the settings of your various modules, they each have their own settings screen, uh, a lot easier. So tidy UI, just type that in the search bar at the upper, actually tidy space U, tidy. Yep. Tidy Space it's, UI. There we go. It's the one that comes up as a Tidy UI game settings, right? Yep. And then click yep. the install button. Boom. <clears throat> one. Already installed. Yep. That and it just takes a couple easy. seconds. Yeah, that was very easy. I know that for me, um, I, I was with um, using Fantasy Grounds for months and months, and I kept hearing that you had to install all these modules, and it sounded um, onerous to get in. But installing a module is shockingly easy. And also, additionally, it's um, your your various worlds are protected. You can open the world, and the module is not already activated, so it's not going to break your your world. You can keep things under control. Once you're in your world, you, there's a way to turn it on and off. Okay, for modules that include a lot of assets, such as the map packs and music and sound modules, uh, you'll want to finish each installation before proceeding to the next one, because otherwise it might corrupt your, your download. So this will, part will now not be not recorded, but let's install the following modules. Make sure you guys have these modules. Now that the modules are installed, go to the world that we're using. I launch the world and I see the sign up screen. And this is what your players, when you eventually give them a you uh, an IP address to go to, they will see a sign up screen like this. And you will have, they will then choose their player name from here and put in the password that you set and, to get into your game. And for when you create a world, there is no password. So you just leave the password field empty. In the upper right corner, there is a set of gears. That's your settings. Are you all there? Mm -hmm. okay. Yes. And then um, click Manage Modules, and you'll see all of the modules you'll installed. And first, some of you already been playing around with Foundry, so first deactivate all modules if that's if you are one of them. And then we're only going to turn on Tidy UI for now. Okay. okay, and then that reloads Foundry, and it's going to cause your players, whenever you turn things on and off, your players will, uh, they'll be playing through their web browser. Uh, it may require them to refresh their browser, and sometimes when your players are having bug, you know, like seeing old versions of the map, for, for instance, usually refreshing their browser will fix the problem. And... Okay, so what 
the first thing that you'll want to do is uh, create um, a set of users. So press escape and go to user management. And here you get to set the permissions for, uh, you get to set up all of your players' accounts and set their permissions. So uh, there are template permissions. You can just give someone the role of player and it'll give a set of permissions for that. And you can define what each role, uh, what permissions each role gets. So uh, here you just create an additional user, give it a name and then give it a password. What I personally do in my home campaigns uh, where I have consistent players is I give their username is their name, obviously, and their password is their name, but without capital letters. That's very easy to remember. But uh, when you're running in the, um, the for the Endless Tale Tavern, you'll probably just want something generic like player one, player two, I'm guessing. Or you can I mean, make one for that uh, Discord name, actually. Probably do that. What do you guys think, actually? Um, uh -huh. I think that we could probably use something generic. You know what? I just realized something. It should be their Discord name because you can see their cursors on the screen and it gives their name. Oh, that's a good idea. Yeah. Okay. So, for now, I'm just going to have no password, player one, player two, player yeah, for three, etc. Yeah. So, and then uh, I'll... so I'm just going to create some accounts for the audience. And uh, and then save and return, and then you're gonna have to sign in again, which is a little annoying. Oops. Okay. Whenever your uh, guys are done uh, following what I say, say you're ready. Yep, you're ready. Okay. Good to go. So Good. I'm just creating some player names right now. Mm-hmm. Okay. No problem. You got there by pressing escape, user management, got it. Yep. Cool. So I just create a bunch of users. They're all players initially. I'm not going to give them a password, save and return. Yep. Cool. We are back. Great. Okay. So uh, next thing is uh, creating a scene. So basically what scenes are, are... I, I usually use them for two purposes. One is to show just a still picture, like having a nice splash page uh, for when people join your campaign, for instance. And then second, you're mostly using scenes to have a, a gridded map, and it doesn't have to be gridded either, that the players uh, can um, have their characters in, and which will be represented by a token, and they can move the token around. So the first thing we'll do is set up a, our first scene so to do that, we um, you want to go to uh, we're going to activate each module individually just so that um, uh, we are with the audience because I'm going to be asking the audience to do that. So uh, the next the next thing we'll activate go under modules is going to be moonlight maps. Mm -hmm. And then. Um, You'll be back in Foundry, and you're not going to immediately see Moonlight Maps, because what it did was it revealed a compendium. Um, in the upper right corner, the second to last button is your compendium packs. So go there, and then scroll way down. Um, what compendia are, are uh, things you can import into your world. They exist on your server, but not necessarily in your world. Uh, so Pathfinder, if you have, if you have a Pathfinder 2E world, you're going to have a lot of compendia already because of the open gaming license, including iconic characters, things like that. But if you scroll to the way to the bottom, you will find the Moonlight Maps compendia, and then you'll want to open city, the city tavern. And, um, just the compendium. Tell me when you're there. There. Good to go. Uh, yep. Okay. And then uh, something cool is going to happen. Um, well, not quite yet. But what you want to do is right click the one that says City Tavern 
the very first one, City Tavern Lit, and import the entry. And what that does is it um, saves it in your world. And then it's going to have a configuration screen. We won't go over that yet. Just save changes. And uh, when it should take you instantly to your scenes button, your scenes tab. Does it do that for you guys? Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. And you'll see the city tower, the scene that you just imported, the, the map you just imported is now there. So here, um, if you left click it, you'll get the settings again. But if you right click it, click view scene, and you should start to hear already some ambiance. Uh, no, not yet, actually. <laughs> not yet. When we get the modules installed that give all the... Uh, no, no, no. I think thing. I think it's right. there for some reason. I actually don't know why it's there already, but we got to put a token in there to hear the sound effect. But that'll happen soon. So... Because um... uh, it took me a little bit too long to figure this out. Uh -huh. To actually move around the map, uh, you, you right-click the map and just drag. Oh, yes, I... yes. Th very good to know. Uh, thank you uh, for bringing that up. To move this around, you right-click it and drag, drag it around. And you can use your mouse wheel to zoom in. All right, you can go under its, um, you can have multiple scenes. Um, and on the upper left uh, is a handy, uh, gives you a list of all of, uh, you can have a growing list of, nap of scenes you can navigate between. And the way you make sure that they're added and removed is right click either city tavern in the upper left or in your scenes directory on the right and then you will uh, click toggle navigation and that toggles whether it appears in this navigation bar also um, go uh, go under its settings configure and you get to make it appear on players navigation bar as well by um, uh, uh, next to permissions by clicking the button GM only and changing that to all players. And there's also a checkbox there to make it um, added to the navigation bar permanently. Right now it's showing City Tavern just because you are showing, you are viewing the City Tavern. That's the only reason why it's there right now. Okay. Mm -hmm. Also, um, while you're still under configure scene, click the grid tab. And um, here is where you set the grid. And you get to have a hex grid, that's an option. Also, click, you see the little uh, rulers button next to grid type? Mm -hmm. Okay, click yes. Yeah. And this shows you the, the underlying grid. And this is where you get to uh, make sure it aligns with your artwork. Um, there are some useful keyboard shortcuts that are described here, including using your arrow keys to move the grid around. And uh, you get to scale the image graphic and also change the number of pixels your grid is. So uh, that's very important for setting up your maps. Um, then you uh, would save the changes. And other things, other settings that you can do under the scene are... Um, you can change the background color. Right now it's a plain neutral gray. Personally, I like my maps to be have a black background, but this is useful right now to know what's off the map, if you prefer that. And you can also, also set the initial view position. So if, where, wherever you have it um, positioned um, on your screen, and I believe it's relative to the upper left corner. I'm not sure about that. But if you like the, if you want players, for example, to be centered at a, in the middle of your screen because that's where they enter the, that dungeon level, then you would want to, you know, zoom in. It also remembers your zoom level as well as the position, and then click the button so that it remembers that, so that they go there when they enter the scene. Okay, then uh, lighting is important as well. Uh, token vision. Sorry, you said. Mm -hmm. button but i didn't quite catch which button it was it's uh the bottom next to initial oh, view position. it's an in initial view position in basics i was looking in grid that makes sense yeah okay okay now click the lighting tab and token vision is on by default that's an important one this means that on the player side they only um see what their token sees and they um, and 
usually when they don't have a token on it yet, they'll report to you that they only see a black screen. Um, that That's because token vision is on. If you want them to see, like, just say a splash page picture, you would turn this off. Then um, unrestricted vision range is also important if you want them to not to see um, the entire map that they're uh, everything that their token sees. Sorry, if you want them when they click their token can see um, everything that is not blocked by a wall. So it's going to ignore darkness, dark areas. And uh, also tokens have a vision radius, which is usually not limited. Okay. Okay, those are the only really important settings. Oh, plus darkness level, if you want it to uh, represent a dark dungeon. I, I usually set darkness level to something. Sometimes one, but it's a little too dark for my tastes. Um, I think that for this scene, like, a little bit of 0.35 gives a nice, like, atmosphere inside the tavern. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, you can see all the light effects. I should go over that, too. And ambiance is... Um, the scene playlist you can have a um, when you s start setting up playlists in your in your music uh, directory you can make a certain playlist play um, whenever that scene is opened and also have a weather effect uh, as well okay so uh, let's see the next thing I think is to Okay, on the top left corner, there's a bunch of uh, modes. You're, you are, by default, uh, in token controls mode. And if you uh, click the button that looks like, what is that, the Parthenon? Uh, wall controls. Yeah. <laughs> so click that. And you'll see that in this map, there's a bunch of different colored lines that are the walls that are drawn in. And uh, so, quickly how to draw walls. So uh, there's a new column of buttons that have, have appeared that uh, let you add more walls. And if you see the purple plus sign mm -hmm. here, yep. if you click that, um, it turns that on and that makes your walls lock to the grid. So you can play around with it a little now. Um, why don't you go ahead and do that? And uh, you can draw some walls. Um, the default uh, button is draw walls. It's just a set of uh, horizontal lines. And these create actual physical walls that block line of sight and block uh, characters from moving through them. Right below that is terrain walls. And I just these... want to point out something else cool with those walls. You can uh -huh. see how it blocks light if you go to the fireplace and draw it in front. Yeah. So, yeah. It's neat. You need to zoom in to see it, because the fireplace is dim, but you can see it. Oh, yeah. You're right. Yep. Well, I'm not well, sure. Well, now it's clipping inside the light, so the light is actually appearing on both sides of the wall at that point. Yeah, I'm not sure what... Okay. And um, right below that is terrain walls. These are the green walls that you see on the map. What those uh, are uh, is they block movement, but the players can actually see what can see um, through one of these walls. So they can actually see the pillar that they are being forced to walk around. Yeah. Then next is invisible walls. So this is, um, as you can see, there's a on the stairwell. There is a light blue line. What that does is uh, they can see through this wall, but uh, to actually, they cannot walk through it. Okay, then next is um, ethereal walls. So uh, let's say there's a magical walk-through wall in this tavern, and an ethereal wall would block sight, but let you walk through it. So oh, maybe for wall things like, like fabric wall curtains as well. Oh, sorry, go ahead. One of you, Sean? <laughs> Sean? Like a wall of fire? Yes, yes. A wall of fire. Perfect. And 
Mm -hmm. I was thinking of a mundane example, like those bead curtains that you can't really see through at uh, certain stores. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Like the, the exclusive section of the store. Yeah. Or, exactly. you know, where the porn videos are in the old days when you had video stores. Oh, yeah. If you're... If you're uh... <laughs> campaign doesn't still have blockbuster alive i want no part of it Always <laughs> but don't, don't worry my replica game will have a blockbuster in it just for you oh thank you buddy i need that <laughs> all right so uh next is doors and these provide these are normal doors that players can normally open which by the way is a permission you can prevent them from opening doors and let's um go back to token controls mode just to see how the doors work. So uh, you see, uh, just to go to one of the doors, and if you cl left click it, it opens the door. And if you close it, uh, click it again, it closes, which when I came from Roll20 was a revelation. I don't know if they've created doors yet in Roll20 that actually work. I don't think so. It might be an advent, I don't know. I just, I clip into walls all the time. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it's I been like 10 tried years. using the wall system. It's been 10 World years. Country. I don't know why. I think it's 10 years or 8 years. Um, okay. Then uh, I think it sounds like Sean is withholding his comments. No, I'm, I'm just typing because you'll see it in the video. But like, I it took me a while to get Notepad open, so I was struggling with Notepad. Okay. All right. Um, then if you right click the door, it locks the door. And now they cannot open it. So the next button down is secret doors. And uh, this uh, just makes it so that, uh, okay, what's a good example secret door? Let me see what happens when I replace this with a secret door. So I'm deleting one of the, wall the doors and putting a secret door in its place. There is actually a secret door in the thing base uh, to the left next to the fireplace. No, that's a regular door. That's it's open door. It's it's a it's when it's the door's open, it uh, uh, becomes on top of the fireplace. There's this small secret door, uh, like um, just above it. No, that's a window. That's a uh, oh okay. Invisible they have wall. anything that's dark purple on the map. Right. Sorry, I drew it, but I accidentally drew it on top of a window, so it, the colors mixed. Yeah, so you can make a wall that you can make a window in Foundry, which I don't know if Roll Twenty has done, made that possible yet. But that was something I was frustrated by too. You couldn't make windows. Um, Roll Twenty walls were so weird; I just never used them. <laughs> oh, you just, oh yeah, just you just told them things. don't walk through the wall. <laughs> I, I just verbally tell them, don't walk through the wall. I never <laughs> yeah. used lighting either because it never worked properly the way right. I wanted it to. And I had so many issues and you need to pay the subscription fee in order to actually like have token based lights. Oh, There's an entire yeah. thing. Mm -hmm. I just scrapped all that. I'm like, look, this is I've drawn on this map here. Don't don't go past. The game's more fun with more information anyway. Uh, no point in restricting it, you know. Uh... Um, yeah. OK, well. Uh, if you are in some some sometimes it makes sense to have walls, obviously. But yeah. okay, we'll move on. Um, okay, secret door. I just created a secret door, and then uh, it uh, becomes hidden to the players. Well, it's only um, you can lock the secret door and open and close it. Those are the functions of it. So I, I suppose what happens is that the players don't see a door icon. That's the difference. OK. So another thing to point out is that on the left top left corner of um, the interface, there is this light bulb, lighting controls. And you'll see all the light sources that the map maker set up. And if you want to add new light source, you just use um, make sure the light the second light bulb draw light source tool is chosen and you get to just click and drag and create a new light source. And when you double click the light bulb, you get to change settings about that light source, such as animations, the in lighting intensity, the color. Um, there's a lot of 
is very customizable. And there are similar, this is similarly how you would also set up um, ambient sound effects on the map as well. Uh, also on the upper left is a daylight button. So if you click the uh, transition to daylight, it will brighten. And if you click the moon, it will gradually darken the scene to darkness. Okay. Tell me when I can move on. Question, how do I delete light sources I didn't want to create? Um, hover over the light source and press delete. Okay. And you can I'll also copy it. and paste light sources too with control C and control V. That makes sense. Okay. All right. Uh, you're good to go. Hmm? I am ready. Okay, cool. Yep. All right. Am I just being very thorough or do you not have questions about you just haven't had No, you're just being very thorough. Oh, okay. I would say it's pretty thorough, and I'm also just kind of reading the controls as you say them. So, cool. yeah, uh, But like, I did have a question. When I did click on the navigation thing for the city tavern, mm -hmm. I clicked activate scene. What, what does that do? Ah, good question. Activate scene means that um, there can only be one scene that's activated at a, t at a time, and what that does is moves yourself and all the players to that scene so this allows you to have multiple um let's say they're um on the first floor of a dungeon and you want to do some work on the second floor but you don't want them to see it yet uh and you want them some things prepared before you you activate the second level uh usually you want to put their tokens on the second level so that and have some other things set up and maybe some monsters that they meet in the first room on the second level. So you're able to make changes to the second scene before you activate it. Gotcha. Yeah. So activating is for when you're, you've brought, you're bringing your players there. Yes. Yeah. It might have some other function that I'm not aware of from my point, from my end though, that's what I'd use it for. All right. So, uh, the next thing we'll do is put a token in here and uh the pathfinder module and also the D, &D module uh has its own uh, generic characters that you can plop in so uh, go to your compendia and uh go to iconics in pathfinder 2e are you there yeah i'm scrolling yes. trying to figure out where it is you can search for iconics it's right at the top in actors and you scroll down a bit yeah and also there's a yeah, it's an actors. Bar. okay got it got it got it got it and um, what we're going to do is uh, now, before we imported something by right clicking, but with tokens, you're actually able to just drag it onto a map. And you should start hearing um, sound. I Hopefully. Yep. As soon as I select the token, I can. Okay. Okay, you have to actually select it. Yes. Yes. Oh, yep. Once I actually click on the token, I do. That's cool. Yeah. Yeah. So. Um, What's really cool is uh, if when you walk into the bar and out of the bar, the sound changes. So try that. So the way that's done is there's a button for, um, uh, you see, it looks like a music note on the left. Mm -hmm. Okay, ambient sound controls. So when you click that, you'll see there's <laughs> Whoever pre-made this has put a bunch of sound effects and they have areas. So that explains why, you know, they can also make it uh, something louder the closer you go to the center. So there's just a lot of control on, on that as well. Okay. So, um, yeah. Okay, good. There is so much work put into this map. Wow. Yeah. Okay. okay. And another thing is... Um, well, that's what I just did it. Well, and, now oh, I'm going to sure use a custom map. <laughs> and when you... Uh, you can also move them around with the arrow keys when you have the token highlighted as well. And then um, next thing is that Amiri um, and the player of Amiri now has seen the map and has um, memory of look, things that they she no longer looks at. Uh, at the moment, to, yeah. But if you want them to forget all of that information, 
or if you know they accidentally walk through a room and you didn't want them to have walked through that room you can um, re reset their fog of war and to do that uh, click the light bulb on the left hand side and then there's this cloud button and that resets the fog of war for all players so when you go back and click Amiri, she has now forgotten what she saw. Huh. Neat. Okay. All right. That's uh, the scenes. And um, um, actors. Okay. So um, first, if you want to put a monster in this scene, let's say there's a goblin in the, in, um, in the tavern. Um, go back to the compendia and click Bestiary 1. And actually pick any monster you'd like. Let's put a dragon in there. <laughs> I'm going to put a goblin warrior in there. Oh, okay. Um, and I will follow what you're doing. And uh, you get a token, which when you double click it, um, uh, brings all of the stats in, at least if you're using um, Pathfinder, it has all of the monster stats in it. And we could start a combat right now, but not quite yet. Um, but also, if you use, you can also have the artwork immediately placed on the token if you have the official watermarked PDF of the bestiary and use the PDF to Foundry module, which is a great thing to have. It'll automatically put in the official artwork for the goblin in there when you import it. Okay. Um, now let's um, uh, create an actor. So the actor's directory is the fourth button on the top right. And there you see the tokens you've already imported so far. You can create an actor. Uh, click that button. And there are different actor types that you can make. Um, first you have to name it. Let's just name this something. Um, I'll call them Bob. And then the type uh, tells Foundry what, uh, what fields, what kind of information you want. So for a player character, uh, it's going to be a character sheet for your system. We're going to, um, I want you to make non-player character for the moment and then create a new actor. And then you're going to have a uh, non-player character sheet come up. Yeah, you can set its attacks. Sometimes you just want their bear stats. Sometimes you just want their hit points, AC, and attacks. And you can do that here. And it's pretty intuitive. So I think we're done with that. Yeah. Okay, the next thing is um, importing a character. And um, we should, imp uh, for practice, import, like if you're GMing for the Endless Tale Tavern campaign, uh, we're going to practice how to import one of those. Um, Oliver, could we volunteer your character? Is that okay? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. And turn on the Path Builder Import module. And turn on Tidy UI while you're at it, if you haven't done that yet. That was the first I believe thing that was the very first thing you told us to do. Okay, Did nothing good. but turn that on. <laughs> yeah. That should be in this is... boundary, to be honest. Um, that should be path builder of the import, right? Yes. Um, and then you have to go back to the scene. Build modules. Yeah, go back to the scene. I would like to see how to upload custom maps it by the end of the tutorial. Yeah. Just because, like, if I'm running Ravnica, I want to have a map of Ravnica that I can just show people. Uh, that was just answering his question. You can create scene and just upload your own image. Yeah, that makes sense. We'll create a token. So go ahead and create a token that is a player character. Not create a token, I'm sorry. Create an actor. Um, create an actor that is a player character. And just give it a generic name because you're about to import it from Path Builder. I'm going to name it import. OK. And then um, then open that character. Tell me when you're 
all there. Yep, good to go. Okay, and then um, at the top of the character, there should be, if you have the Path Builder module activated, there's the Import button. So click that, and we're going to have all the checkboxes chosen, and then we're going to put in that user ID number, Oliver's user ID number at the bottom. And then click Import. And it'll ask for a confirmation. And it should import it. And it's going to have a question. Uh, and this makes it important to have access to that player's PDF. Uh, this is a new um, revision to the mod. It lets you uh, choose their, uh, in the case of this class, the Magus, uh, what their hybrid study is. So this is Starlet Span. Am I correct or no? Or is that something else? Uh, that was another character. Mine is Laughing Shadow. Okay, Laughing Shadow. Okay, click Laughing Shadow. And read read the little um, bullet points, too, in case there's anything you need to manually add. It looks like uh, so a couple things did not survive. There's, uh, okay, the chain, there is no, is there a change link feat? No. That looks like an error, because that should be the heritage and not a feat. Okay, yeah, it's just not labeled right. And yeah. then um, spell strike specifics is just something uh, path builder specific, it's so that it, I think it displays all of that info in the stat block. Um, but yeah. the actual feature uh, made it through. And yeah. dark vision fetchling is uh, looks like it needs to be added. Okay. Okay, good. I I'm good. I'm glad we got some error messages because we're going to have to contend with those. Um, mm -hmm. So, um, uh, Heritage is on the first. Okay, you can see there's a lot of. Te uh, to the character sheets. Um, go to the character sheet now after you press whatever confirmation buttons you need to. And you'll see that there's a bunch of buttons at the top that show different displays. So, on the first one that comes up, the character. Um, it has the uh, most basic info, and this is where we add the heritage. So click the plus button there, and a compen the heritage's compendium will come up. And you should start typing in changeling, and uh, and tell me when you see changeling. I do. Okay. Now. I may just be constructed alternatively because I, it just worked for me. Like all of it, I didn't get any errors. Oh, uh, uh, interesting. Oh, no. Uh, um, okay, what you're gonna wanna uh, do is um, drag changeling onto the sheet. Now you could click import and all that does is it creates an item, which is not what we want. Some, the items directory is its own thing. Okay, then uh, the other thing we were going to do was add, what were we adding? Dark vision. Dark vision. Okay, so very good to know is go to the compendia and then for, um, you're going to- I the should mention that it does have dark vision. It, I don't know why it said it didn't import. Oh, okay. Yeah, it already is activated, but um, it's not recorded as a feat. Now, this is a level of detail. This is not something you need to worry about as a GM, but just so that we can practice um, uh, making a, a, a character, um, when you go under Compendia and scroll down below the actors, there's items. This is the stuff you add, uh, you use to build a character in Foundry, a Pathfinder character in Foundry. And D and D will have its own similar section where you get to open a compendium and find classes, and then you drag them on to the character sheet. So here, um, this will be an ancestry feature. So open that compendium, and uh, I see um, there wasn't a dark vision fetchling uh, feature, so that's why the importer was confused. So. Uh, what we'll do is um, on the character sheet, there is a tab. It's the seventh one called Feats. So go there. 
it shows a little metal because it's like you did a feat and got a medal for it. And that's why there's metal there. Good, good. And then you can drag dark vision there. And that should appear under ancestry features. Now, if you're OCD like I am sometimes, I like to be complete and do things like that. But it wasn't necessary for this character because as Oliver pointed out, the importer caught that it um, he has light dark vision, which is on the first first part of the character sheet. I'd also like to point out that I think you can drag things onto the character sheet without having where it, the the display where it displays actually on the screen. You can like drag it on and it still finds a place, it finds a home. So I just dragged dark vision onto the skills tab and it found its home. And now it has two dark visions. You can't have enough. Okay. So that's how importing goes. A couple of things the importer doesn't catch is uh, you'll want to update its current hit points to full. So um, on the left side, I would you know make it 17. Yeah. I don't think it caught my armor, or I don't see the armor. That was going to be another thing you have to manually do. So uh, oh. under equipment, inventory, the third button, You'll want to um, click the little armor symbol for... Oh, it doesn't have your armor at all. No. No. So good thing we are learning about the compendia, because you want to open um, the equipment compendium for this. And what kind of armor do you have? Uh, hide. Hide armor. So uh, I'm going to drag that onto mine. There's normal hide armor. I'll drag into the section. Mm -hmm. Click the button and oh look, 18 AC. Wow. Okay, and then yep, if you when you click the gray armor, it um, that's the difference between equipped and not equipped. And um, for if you're using token action HUD, um, that determines whether it shows up in the token action HUD. Okay, I'm looking at your PDF, Oliver. There's no hide armor there. Oh wait, it, it just says hide. Okay. Hmm. Yeah, I didn't catch it. Okay, so it's not perfect, and uh, your players are almost certainly going to find errors for you if they care about it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, um, so that'll be a first thing. We need a little um, checklist for GMs, by the way, Sean, of things to make okay. sure to do, and that'll include, you know, vetting their character in Foundry. Okay, mm -hmm. so when you click the hide armor, it should raise the AC, and... Um, also, if there's magic items, there's going to be a second little button next to the armor, um, a little diamond to invest it as well. Um, yeah. So uh, if you want things to show up in the token action HUD, which is an excellent mod, um, you'll want to equip the battle axe so that they have an automated button to make attacks with the axe. Oh, can we see that? If possible, it's just going to enable the module, right? Yeah, yeah, might as well. Right now, we're going to turn on some modules for the upcoming combat walkthrough. So that will include Dice So Nice, Dice Tray, Drag Ruler, F is for flat footed, for, oh, Drag Ruler had a dependency. I clicked yes. For, uh, Pathfinder, there is PF2E, F is for flat footed. And health estimate, which uh, gives players an, only an estimate of a creature's health rather than seeing their health bar, which is optional, of course. I like my players to know. Then Elandril's token tooltips. Then smart target and tokenizer and token action HUD. Okay, other ones to um, act, act uh, turn on are token health and for Pathfinder PF2E persistent damage. And, okay. and pinks. Let's also turn on pinks. 
things. Yep. Yep. And you should be able to. Uh, I'm not sure why it doesn't go to the city tavern automatically. I think because we haven't. I have not activated the city tavern. After, so um, the re if if it doesn't load the tavern automatically after you reload foundry from changing the modules it's because it's not activated i think is there a way to deactivate something after you activate it no it's, i think there's always it there's always something activated cool. and pf2e persistent oh. damage all right which is a module that we get a lot of use of in our high level game yes we do. Uh, did you notice how I gave myself a sword that also deals persistent damage? Because like I oh, felt no. like it was enough. <laughs> Without that mod, I... I'd be tearing my hair out. Yeah. Look, um, look it's in just our, in our recent types. level fourteen session. Swing. The party had put on like an average of like thirty persistent damage yeah. on well, somebody well, who was also enemies. paralyzed and <laughs> thought and almost sent to another dimension and did, had. Uh, was not sure of his own reality. Yeah. That okay. was right. It's like a cruel and unusual punishment. <laughs> yep. Okay, now that we have tokenizer in, uh, turned on, um, let's go back to Zara Lorekeeper's character sheet and add the artwork. So um, for the GMs uh, for in Endless Tale Tavern campaign, we have a spreadsheet, and you can find their picture there, a link, a hyperlink to their picture. And uh, in this case, um, we have this picture. So you want to go to the actual source URL for the picture and uh, save it on your computer. And you'll want to, if you have a server installed, save it in your server. Um, but for our purposes, just put it on your desktop, probably. Make it easy to find. I am downloaded. I mean, I had it, it already. It's just so. going to take me one. Mm -hmm. All right, it is downloaded. Now go to Zara Lorekeeper's character sheet and click the the generic picture, and that should take you to the tokenizer interface. Um, so we on the left hand side is the avatar. This is what shows up in your directories, and um, we're going to add a layer and click the, f the button on the far right. No, no, I'm sorry. Um, if you have a server, the button on the far right. If you have it on your computer, uh, th the second to last button, and then you'll just find, uh, and then click that, and then find your file there. Until I assume do the same thing for the token layer. Uh, no, no, there's a quick way to do that, so hold off on oh. that. Oh, then I'll wait to see the quick way. Yeah. So are we waiting for something? Uh, are you done? Oh. Yes, I'm yes, starting the avatar. Okay. You know what? I just realized there's a use use a URL button. That's probably faster, you guys. Let's for, see if for, uh, when you're works. importing for the endless tavern. Yeah. Here, uh, click uh, download from the internet, and then we're gonna insert our HTTP uh, URL code, and it uh, will find a picture that way. Um, Okay. I, I didn't get the that to work from the internet, even though it worked uploading from my computer. So I don't know what's up with that. Could just be on my end. You got an error message? Uh, no, it just didn't do anything. It could be that the Discord attachment link doesn't recognize it as a picture. That's true. Yeah. Okay. Well. Uh... 
Okay, so we're going to have to do it the clunkier way. Yeah, I mean, you just delete there. Downloads yeah, and they because get otherwise, small, they for the trackers, me, Sean, and others, we'd have to upload it to our drive, which is a pain. Yeah, I think this is fine. It's a little yeah. bit of work. It's not too much. Yeah, and also, uh, if it's in your server, you get to use it for other purposes, like put it in a journal entry and stuff. Okay. Um, okay, now we're going to now work on the token. Um, you see add layer. Um, we're going to, the first thing, the first button is to use the avatar image as your layer. So click that. And it should import a circle version of your avatar, yeah? Mm -hmm. Okay. And then um, you see your three layers um, there. And the up and down buttons let you... Um, decide what's going to be on top of what else. So you're going to lower it so that it is behind the token frame. Okay. All right, so it's not centered correctly. So you see the little lock for this layer, unlock it. And now you can left drag it around and use your mouse wheel to zoom in and out. Some people like to zoom in on the face. Some people like the whole body. Um, Let's actually um, uh, make it the whole body together so that there's a little white area that we want to get rid of. And the way you get rid of it is the little eyedropper tool. Click the eyedropper and then hover over a picture that you want, uh, ho uh, hover over a color that you want to be in the background. And it's going to um, do that for you. And. Yeah, I think those are the things I mostly use. Okay, and you can just, oh, oh, and then add a frame. Right now it has the default, um, the silver circle is the default frame for PCs and the, the default frame for NPCs is red. So you if you want it to be changed to the NPC frame, just click that button apply frame in the bottom right and it'll make it red and there are other um uh you can also choose other artwork there's the player frame if you want to uh, to go back to the silver circle could you demonstrate how we could upload other artwork for frames it looks like what it's doing is when you go to the drop down menu it's going to look in a certain directory and I'm actually not sure what directory that is it, it's going to mean ex having a server set up and knowing um, and then ascertaining which directory these are all in because I know I was messing around with the files and copied some images into random folders and I'm seeing one of those in there but I just want to know like if you knew what the folder was for future reference Otherwise, you could do it as uh, deleting the frame um, and then uploading your frame separately as a um, yeah, like you a can layer. upload or other artwork just right. You can like upload right there. a different yeah. picture that has the frame you want in it already. Oh yeah, these buttons are for if you want to use something on the server or use something from your computer, and then you yeah. know what. Um, it looks like on my end, I have a huge number of choices, and it seems to have remembered every single avatar, every single token I have made. That um, would make sense why I got that random image then. Okay. Then I don't know what the save button does. Hmm. I suppose to save your work, and then you press OK, and then um, it should apply it to the current character sheet. All right, then what happens now is um, go to the map, probably close the character sheets, and you get to drag Zara Lorekeeper from the directory directly onto the map. Okay. Now, um, another thing too is um, I personally like to have the GM be able to see everyone's health bars. So, the way I do that is go to game settings in the upper right and configure settings and um, under 
default token configuration, you get to change the settings. Tell me when you're at that window. I am at that window. Okay. I'm good. Okay, once you click mm -hmm. default token settings, um, you can make it so that the display name, I like to have it um, when anyone hovers over a token, hovered by anyone, this would reveal the name of a token to your players. Um, that's optional. <laughs> Then under resources, I like to have it, um, the display bar be always for owner. The GM owns all tokens. And this also means that uh, the players see their own character's health bar. Okay, another thing that's important to do right now, okay, um, is make it so that Oliver gets to own his token. So you're going to right click Zara Lorekeeper and configure permissions. And there you have a set of permissions. Um, it, it tells you every user and you, they have a drop down menu. Um, all play, you can make it so that all players by default own Oliver's token so that they can move his token around and roll on his behalf. None, none means uh, they don't actually see it in the sidebar. Limited means that players see it in the sidebar and can see limited information about them. Observer means they can open the character sheet as well on top of that and also click the token on the map and see things from their perspective. And owner means they can control the token. That makes sense. And probably simpler to have everybody own everyone's token in case, you know, someone has to leave a session early and you're in the middle of a battle. Yeah, or you can have other people look up things for a player, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. Yeah. Oh, another thing about tokens, actually, I should go over is um, right-click a token, right-click Zara, and you, you'll see um, these things appear around Zara, and it, you'll see uh, Zara's current health displayed. As 17. On the upper left, you get to type in their elevation if you want to track how high things are. Uh, in the middle left is the settings for the token, uh, and you get to set individual settings for it, such as uh, one important one that is not always caught is to go under vision and to make sure. Um, oh, it's managed by a module, rules based vision. That's good to know. Uh, but if it's not managed by a mod, um, this is where you would give them dark vision and low light vision. And you'll actually want to make uh, their prototype token under their actor have um, dark vision. You want to make sure that's correct and uh, so that you're not doing it every time you place them on a new scene. And you can make other changes like their size. Their size can change, but uh, Pathfinder's module is excellent and often uh, changes that when they're enlarged automatically. Um, and you can have um, an emanation, an aura go around them if you need that. So that's token settings. The bottom left is to make is to target the token, which uh, you'll see the importance of when we go through the combat. The upper right makes them visible and um, to players and invisible to players. So that's useful if you want to pre-place monsters on a map, but don't want players to see the monster yet. On the right is the conditions, and um, you'll see all the conditions in Pathfinder the alphabetized that you can add and subtract from the token. And the bottom right um, is to add them to the, to the combat tracker. Let us... Um, go over sound, um, we're going to turn on a, a few more modules now. We're going to turn on Ivan Dutch's music packs, Maestro, and Soundboard. Uh, all three Soundboard modules. So tell me when you have that. I should be good to go now. Okay. Yep, should be good to go. All right, let's play a little with the soundboard. So click the little music note in the upper right corner. 
and uh, you can open the soundboard and it has some common sounds uh, that immediately show up. Arrow whoosh, arrow hit, <laughs> and uh, and then um, on the on the top right, there's bundled sounds. So this is everything that um, this is a bunch of free sounds that come up come with the other modules that we just activated. There's like free community made ones, and um, you can ha have some nice ambient sounds like stone a stone door opening. Uh, you can play with those right now. Oh, okay, dragon roll. Can you hear those, or is it just me? Uh, just you. Okay. I can hear just it you. when I click it on my screen. Okay. And for every sound effect, there's three dots. If you click that, you can um, make it a favorite of yours so that you can have your own, like, you know, bes bespoke, um, you know, list that you access easily under favorite sounds. Um, you can also minimize sections if there are some sections you're not really using, like um, so that this is easier to navigate. My students love the um, sounds of puking and peeing and immature it under the immature section. <laughs> Music. Oh, and there's a collapse yeah. all button as well. I find that useful. All right. so. Um, are you guys who would want to know how uh, to uh, get a music track going whenever you start a combat? I mean, it doesn't hurt to have in the video at least. Yeah, okay. So um, let's uh, do this. So Ivan Dutch's music pack is a compendium, and you want to go to your compendia and then scroll all the way down. And I recommend just importing all of them. So right click Ivan Dutch's playlist and import all content. And you uh, scroll down to, to playlist, I'm Dutch playlist, import all. Yep, please. Mm -hmm. And that shows there. Um, another silly question is there a way for you to upload your own music to this? Yeah, uh, it would need to be in your server, and uh, you would um, uh, at the very top there are buttons to create a playlist, and within your playlist you can add a track, and then it's going to ask you which uh, ha ask you to point to the file. So and I can make my own custom playlist that way. Sounds good. Yeah, and there are ways to make uh, playlists shuffle. Um, tracks repeat all that yeah, um, and yes. oh uh, something useful too is that if someone's new to foundry they um, and you play the music what often happens is it's too loud for them yeah. and uh, they need to know you have to tell your players to go to the audio playlist section and click global volume controls and slide their playlists volume yeah I had it slid down a lot for Marshall's V casters yeah so uh, what we'll do next is, uh, okay, there's only one uh, thing we need to do a little setup for. So, okay, to start a combat, um, you just highlight all the tokens on the map that you want to be included as an, um, uh, in the combat. So we're going to have a, a Miri, the Barbarian. Oh, well, let's not have a Miri. <laughs> let's just have uh, two actors. Let's just have um, Zara and the Goblin in our initiative. So uh, let's uh, draw a rectangle around around them, then right click a token, and then click top the the bottom right button, the crossed swords and shield to toggle their combat state. That now adds them to the combat. Uh, the combat tracker is the second button in the upper right corner, the encounter Ooh. tracker. And if you want something to pop out, which you, you'll want to for the combat tracker, right click it and that's going to make that um, thing pop out for you. You can do that with any of these buttons if you want them on your screen and uh, Sean with your huge resolution you probably want you can do that easily. Yeah like I have enough resolution on my second monitor but I'm yeah. probably going to use on my primary which blah 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 technical settings whatever. Yeah 
Okay. So do I have to click uh, toggle combat state for each uh, character, or is there like a... No. Uh, you can click drag a massive box and then just do it for one token that does for everybody. Cool. Yeah. Okay, so tell me when you guys have your encounter tracker up and can see the button begin, begin encounter. And don't click it yet. I think I might have missed a step or yeah. something. Because I don't how did he get it to pop out? Sorry. You right click the button that reveals that tab. Okay. Yes. Okay. okay. I realize now there's another setting I need to turn on. Go under module, go under configure settings. Um, so game settings, the gear button, then configure settings. And um, once you're there, click module settings. Mm-hmm. Now, you'll see the list of your active modules that have settings, and they're all, it's just a list here because we've installed tidy UI. If we didn't, it would show, all, these would not be minimized. So go under Maestro and enable combat track. And um, I think that's all we need to change. And then click save changes. Another thing we want to do is, um, uh, configure dice so nice um so under dice so nice settings open that and then click my dice settings and every player can do this players um uh, can have their own custom dice and this is where uh you get to choose a lot of preset themes and um some of them are pretty nice and uh I'm going to choose um, something that's colorful. Bird up. Oh, no, not that one. Where's the one with the different colors? Rainbow. There's rainbow at the top. Oh, you found it. I had to unmute. Yeah. Um, OK. And you get to do test rolls from here to see how they roll. And what's cool is that there's um, you can there's a lot of customizability. Um, there's a lot of buttons as you can see, and um, one thing that GMs like to set up is special effects. So if you have um, if you want a specific result to happen on a D twenty, like an animation, um, press the plus sign and then uh, define the parameters so that when there's a d20 rolled and a 20 shows up, you will make it uh, do a um, specific animation. And you get to do a test roll. Well, it doesn't test the specific thing, which is annoying. You can create an additional one to have a sound effect. So another row, create another effect so that on a 20, that um, they get the epic win sound. So there is a display chat message me, believe. Yo, I'm going to disable display chat message me. I like the suspense of seeing the dice animation. Yeah, that's another important one. Good for bringing that up. Um, by default, that is not set. But yeah. I, um, and I did that for the stream so that there was suspense. But when I'm GMing um, and doing a lot of roles at once, like a lot of secret perception roles, I like to see the chat immediately. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, we can now do our battle finally. No, not yet. <laughs> We're going to go under um, uh, music. Yes. Um, okay, then I um, activate their combat state and now have a play uh, a, a new encounter. Um, so create, delete your old encounter. There's a little trash sign or an end encounter. And then you'll want to create a new encounter now that uh, we change that maestro setting. Didn't change the music at all? No, uh, we, there's still one more step. OK. So you are creating an encounter and not beginning it yet, yeah? Yeah. OK. Mm -hmm. 
then um, you see a little music note now. Yep. Yep. Okay. So um, click defaults because you're going to make your default playlist, and we're going to make it uh, combat Ivan Dutch or Dutch or Duch. I don't know. And play random track or play playlist probably is probably needed to make it play the whole list. And also uh, under the this, um, go to the music uh, tab again, click Ivan Dutch's playlists, right click combat Ivan Dutch, and you can edit the playlist so that it sh shuffles. Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. So that's, those are my preferred settings. So now, Click begin encounter and then it should start. Does it? Yes. Good, good. All right. And when you end encounter, it ends the it ends the music as well. But don't end it yet because we want to run this battle. Okay. Now in the upper left corner, there's a roll all button. This rolls the players as well as the NPCs. Some players like to roll their own dice, so I usually just roll. Click the second button. Roll NPCs. And uh, and do that roll. Now, if make sure it, you don't have any token selector or whatever. Yeah. Now, if a pop up menu showed up just now, did it? Sh who had a little pop up menu show up? Me. Okay. I personally don't prefer that as the default. I I prefer that not show up. Um. So, click the gears in the upper right. And um, under PF2E player settings, I um, uncheck show role dialogues. Okay. Then we go back to our uh, encounter tracker, which um, yeah, again, right click to make it pop out. Uh, and then, um, and anyone can just roll their, uh, who has their encounter tracker up can just roll the, that little d20 there. And for Pathfinder purposes, um, open Zara Lorekeeper's um, sheet, hit, um, his, the character sheet. You see on the left-hand side, initiative, there's a little drop-down menu to change, select a different skill. So if they want to roll stealth for initiative, um, this is where they would change it. So that's for future reference. Okay. And... Um, you also can change the initiative around. So let's um, make, if necessary, let's just play with it now. You can just drag the actors in the menu, in the in the counter tracker, and let's make the goblin warrior first. Okay, because we have token action HUD ac uh, turned on, to click the goblin warrior, and you should see some buttons appear now in the upper left. And the ambient sounds are too loud for me, so that is uh, under global volume controls. Under, um, click the musical note in the upper right in the main interface. And ambient has its own um, volume tab. Okay. Volume slider. Okay, we're back to the goblin's turn. Uh, the spacebar pauses and unpauses the game. When the game is paused, players cannot move their tokens around. Um, okay, so the Goblin Warrior is now going to uh, click the Goblin Warrior, and you see that it has buttons. The dogs under strikes, you have all of its attacks, and the multiple attack penalty is also calculated there for you. You can choose those different buttons. So we're going to have the Goblin um, target Zara Lorekeeper. Um, you can target, uh, if you have smart target mod turned on, you can just hover over Zara and press T, the letter T, and it will target Zara so that, uh, the attack roll is compared against Zara's AC. And then you can now click that button to do an attack. And it will, um, um, uh, give a result. So let's um, practice applying damage, whatever the result is. So um, you can, uh, for the goblin now, you can click the damage button next to dog slicer. Okay. 
and to apply the damage, um, there's two ways to do it. The default way under Foundry is to click Zara, and um, you see there's a little damage button under the damage result. It looks like a broken heart. Mm -hmm. Okay. What, while you um, to apply it to Zara, click Zara, then click the broken heart, and then that will uh, subtract it from Zara's health. And um, you can also apply half damage, double damage if you do crits, if uh, that way. You can also apply a shield block. Um, if they have a shield block, you can click that and it will do all the math. And you, if you want to heal someone the amount that something says, that a roll says, you, you click the heal button. Uh, you also could have rolled critical uh, damage by um, clicking the critical button under the token action HUD. The mm -hmm. other way to apply damage is to just uh, click Zara, and if you have the um, token health mod, which I like to use, uh, you can just press return and type it in as well. And if you want to heal that a certain amount, you would do shift enter and type a number in. Other ways you can target a creature, um, which in base foundry doesn't have its own function. It depends on the um, the game system module that you have installed. Pathfinder's module does effectuate the, the targeting system. It compares it to the target. Um, but the other ways to target are, um, there's a little button on the top left that looks like a bullseye to select a target. And also when you right click, there's a little bullseye button that you can highlight. You can also uh, target several things at once by, by dragging a rectangle, clicking and dragging a rectangle around them. Um, okay, so um, let's now um, have Zara uh, put it to Zara's turn by, um, in, on the encounter tracker, there's a little right arrow at the bottom. Click the right arrow mm -hmm. so that it advances the initiative. And the, the button to the right of that makes it the next round. Just FYI. Mm -hmm. Okay. So now it's Zara's turn, and now we can play with Zara's class features. And notice that depending on your class, um, you can. Uh, Zara has. Uh, I think every actor has enable abilities that require a flat-footed target. Maybe not all of them, but for example, oh yeah, he he's um, laughing shadow, so he'll have some abilities. Um, the mod is smart enough to apply things like a rogue sneak attack to the damage roll or um, um, the extra damage that Laughing Shadow gets, gets while in Arcane Cascade. You can also toggle on when uh, other things, such as the Arcane cas Cascade damage here. Um, okay, the next button is Actions. You'll find special class features um, that, if that's clicked, it puts it in the chat, which the GM will find useful sometimes. Sometimes a GM should ask, oh, can you put yours in the chat? This is where they can find their various actions and features as well. Features are under their own button. Um, spells are here as well. So uh, you can report a spell to chat. Oh, one thing I did not go through yet. Um, when we imported Zara, he was a spellcaster. So let's open Zara's character sheet and go under spellcasting. Are you there? Yes. Uh, yeah. Spellcasting. I'm here. So when you imported um, a magus, which is similar to a wizard in that they prepare spells out of a spell book, um, it did not uh, prepare the spells for them yet. So the player will need to decide what they prepare. So what you have here is um, uh, a way to define their. You get to see their spell book. You see all the spells listed in their spell book. On the upper left, you see an open book symbol. If you click that, it toggles whether their spell book is showing or not. And from there, you can click and drag their spells into the appropriate spell level that they were prepared for. 
So you tell us, Oliver, what you'd like to prepare. <laughs> uh, well, shield. Shield. Uh, produce flame sounds useful. Uh-huh. Ray of Frost. Uh-huh. Let's go with Mage Hand. Uh-huh. And... Sorry, it's not working right for me. <laughs> Uh-oh. <laughs> um, okay. I have... Sorry, I wasn't specific enough where I dragged it. Okay. Right, sorry. So, shield, produce flame, rear frost, mage hand, and uh -huh. let's go with ghost sound. Ghost sound. And what will be your first level spell? Uh, let's go with magic weapon. Let's really get this weapon. Okay. And it looks like uh, Moon May needs to be pre dragged there. That's probably not... It's probably automated, but it's treating it as a prepared casting. Um, yes. Okay, so um, I think this also lets you heighten spells by dragging a spell into the appropriate spell level. Uh, but uh, you're obviously first level, so we're not dealing with that yet. Okay, so what that does now is that it now populates automatically Zara's spell in the token action HUD. You'll see all those spells now displayed, yeah? Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, click Magic Weapon so that it shows up in the chat. And a, a player will want to click this, and also, for the GM's convenience, click the minus sign next to it so that it is no longer prepared in... Um, Foundry knows it's no longer prepared. Ooh. Okay. Now, you s I just decided your action for you. Sorry, I, I took away your player agency, <laughs> but I want to demonstrate how to do this. Um, in the chat now, um, you see the spells card is there, and it also has a spell effect. You can actually click and drag that onto the token, and um, choose the target of the effect. We're going to say the battle axe, and um, we're now going to, um, let's assume arcane cascade damage is turned on. Now, we're going to click the damage for the battle axe, and it First of all, you see that the battle axe's attack bonus has been increased from the spell. That's because of the the effect is on the token. And all of these effects are attached to the token. Not the actor, but the token. And then you get to click the attack roll. Um ninth well, I have a nine I have a twenty-seven, which is gonna critically hit the goblin. But when you click damage, um it's gonna apply the magic weapon bonus die. And uh, so, as you can see, there's a lot of automation in Foundry. Okay, now that you have the token selected in the upper right corner near the, um, near the row of buttons, interface buttons, you see the little magic weapon effect, and when you hover over it, it says 10 rounds remaining. Do you see that? Mm -hmm. This is also where conditions appear, like um, flat-footed, or sickened, or frightened. Now let's apply the frightened effect on Zara, um, uh, and uh, if you click it, frightened, it makes him frightened one. If you click it again, it makes him frightened two, and if you right click it, it reduces the value of that condition. And you should see the condition appearing and disappearing in the upper right corner because you have him selected right now. Do you see mm -hmm. that? Yeah. Okay. Also, you can manually remove the conditions. Um, let's say you add flat-footed. Uh, click flat-footed. And then um, when you click it, you can just right-click the icon in the upper right corner to remove it. So that's another way to remove it. Also, um, when you are hover because we have the PF2E FS for flat-footed module turned on, you can just hover over Zara and press F, and it makes you flat-footed. Uh, and that's very useful because flanking happens and stops happening very quickly in combat. And so if we have Zara targeting uh, the goblin with a magic weapon, you can do an attack roll and uh, do the damage that way. And I see that um, I actually am not... Um, doing the arcane cascade damage. It's not doing that because it actually we have not... Foundry has no idea what damage type it is. We haven't done something, so I think there's, it's implemented in some way that I'm not aware of. Maybe if we were to take the do the arcane cascade feature, 
There's an arcane awesome. cascade effect that we can drag onto you. And um, no, actually, okay. Arcane cascade. Click the arcane cascade button, and then we see the stance because it's a stance that can be dragged onto you. And then you get to select the extra damage type. Let's say it's acid. And now it should affect it. it um, should be in effect now. So that's a button you you that's a toggle you generally want on, but you control it by applying the stance and removing the stance. And the stance becomes its own effect that you can toggle by right clicking or whatever, or dragging in this case from the arcane cascade feature. So uh, where do I see the oh the effects I can toggle by? Gotcha. My F is for flat foot is not working. Oh. Hmm. Yeah. yeah um, there are ways to uh, custom keybinds in the new version of Foundry, and maybe you have something interfering. I don't know. Maybe. You but uh, you, you, you can fiddle with that. There's now um, in the main settings place you can now. Um, uh, configure the keybinds, I believe. Yeah. Yes. Okay. All right. So that's for for yourself for later. Um. All right. Any questions about running combat? Nope. No. Hmm. Nope. Seems okay. I mean, my goblin got murdered in absolutely one hit, obliterated. <laughs> All right. You can also, you know, set the goblin's health to a specific amount. And when you hover over it, you'll see that token health module is reporting it as a certain amount of injured. And when you apply lethal damage, it automatically sets it to dead. That's convenient. Yeah, yeah, that happens too. And um, now, one thing we have not turned on is the combat enhancements module, um, which I have relied on for direct changing people's initiative. But it has other features like um, um, seeing their current health in the combat tracker. Um, I know it has other perks to it, but I'm not going to go over nothing that will come up in this uh, demo. Oh, also, when you hover over a character because of Elandril's token tooltips, you can see by sight their uh, current health, their perception DC, their um, their armor class, and also any uh, spellcasting resources. I also like to um, change the module settings for as a Pathfinder GM uh, to include their um, save their uh, saving throw DCs. So uh, that's under module settings, uh, configure settings, module settings, Elandril's token tooltips, and you can change the tooltip values to show um, their, where is it? Saving throws, yes, S saving throws, show for everyone. And then now it's going to show their save DCs as well. Hmm. What else? Uh, maximum number of rows. Sorry, because when I now I don't see everything else I saw before when I hovered over. So I had to change the maximum number of rows as well. Oh, okay. All right. And uh, lastly, if someone delays, I like to right click them in the combat tracker and clear their initiative. Um, also, when you uh, drag them around, we have the drag ruler mod installed, and because he's in his ar um, arcane cascade stance, he's very fast. He has a... wait, what's your speed right now? It should be 30 with arcane cascade, because he's armored, it don't get... Oh yeah, because once you go past 35, it changes from like purplish to yellow. Yeah. So it's the second action. It's not showing that for me. Mine isn't changing either. Uh, Maybe because you... um, uh, PF2E drag ruler integration might enable that. Let's see. Because I had that turned off. 
Oh, I put it on at the same as Drag Ruler. Okay. That explains it. All right. So with payoff to a Drag Ruler integration, it also puts every stride in a different color. Okay. Um, and also, um, you can press. Oh. You can uh, press right click to create waypoints as well with um, movement. I think that's the drag ruler mod that enables that. And if you want to erase your waypoints, spacebar uh, one at a time. Okay. All right. I think that's uh, combat. So I'm just going to go over some uh, last miscellaneous mods now, and that'll be it. Um, Oh, persistent damage, you can play with that by right-clicking and adding the bleed condition. No, no, persistent, what is it called? Persistent damage condition in Foundry. I mean, in the PF2E Foundry mod. And there is a, uh, uh, let's say, persistent damage comes up at level 1. So let's just say they got, you get hit by um, an alchemist fire and are burning one fire per uh, turn. So, uh, define that, and then when you go, every time your turn ends, it's going to adjudicate that. So, go to the combat tracker, and advance the turn, and it will apply, one damage will show up, you still have to manually apply it, but if dice needed to be rolled, it would roll the dice. And then there's a little button for the player or the GM to press to do the recovery check. And um, in the case of NPCs, it automatically does their uh, roll. And if they succeed on the roll, it, um, it, or if a PC succeeds on the roll, if anybody succeeds on the roll, it automatically removes that, the applicable persistent condition. So that automation's very, very um, handy. Okay. Mm -hmm. In the chat, you see the dice tray modules at the bottom. Uh, people can uh, create their own, use the buttons to create their own uh, chat formula. Left click to add dice, right, right click to subtract dice. You can add um, uh, fortune, misfortune, or advantage, disadvantage. Um, this might be adapted for 5e as well. You can add a flat mo modifier or penalty with those buttons and then roll does the roll. You can also do um, blind GM rolls. Okay, there's a, I'm not sure the difference between private and blind, but one of them makes it so that uh, uh, the play, player sees the result, but none of the other players. Yeah. Only one player sees the result. Private, private, I believe, is that you yeah. and the GM see the role, and blind is you don't see the role, but only the only the GM does. Okay. They should rename it just private role. That'll make it less confusing, I think. Um, and then, um, yes, so that's very useful. Oh, the um, the hotkeys at the bottom. If you right click a hotkey, uh, right click. You see the hotkey bar. Right click the number one. No, no, left click it and you get to create a macro and um by default it's a chat macro the other is you can create javascript macros as well but if you do forward slash r and do blind no no forward slash blind r i believe space d20 and um you can give it a name blind blind d20 let's say and you can also give it an icon, assign it an icon. You now have a hotkey that will roll a blind d20 roll um, um, for you. And I use that. So everyone should roll a blind d20 roll. Uh, what? Tell me when you've done that. <laughs> Do you need me to repeat anything? Uh, I will stop myself from searching through my computer for good art for this for now. I'm just going to save the macro and run it. Okay. Yep, it showed us a purple box in chat. Yes. Do other people get this, uh, get that far? Yep. Get it. Okay, you can right click it, right click the purple box to reveal it to everyone. So that, um, that's a useful feature as well. 
You can also right click a reveal to everyone to make it private as well. Um, and uh, at the bottom, you get to define whether a role is blind or not through a, a drop down menu. You can also save the chat log uh, through that export button and also delete the chat log as well. Um, what else? We've gone through token action HUD, dice so nice, okay. dice tray, health estimate, to token tool tips, maestro, Ivan Duchess, soundboard, persistent damage. Okay, um, pings. Um, you get to. Before we move on to the next thing, I just want to uh -huh. say something about deleting chat log. Yeah. That's really useful if you're homebrewing and you want to make sure your monster has the things ping correctly. And then you can erase the chat log so your players don't know what you're planning. Oh, yeah, yeah. When I, when I, uh, sometimes I play test a combat. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, I need it hidden. Yep. Okay, so pings is, uh, let's anybody just, um, hold down the mouse button on the map so that everybody sees, um, a point on the map. So this is good for player communication. Um, also, you get to, the GM can do this definitely. I'm not sure if the players can. You can force everybody to s screen to center on a part of the map by holding shift and holding down the button. And that makes everybody, forces everybody to look at that. Okay, so we're gonna move on to some miscellaneous mods. Okay, the torch module. Okay, let's activate that. Um, let's probably activate a set of mods now. Okay, so these are the ones to activate. Um, let me tell you this list first. I'll start over. P Perfect Vision, PDF to Foundry, PF2E Companion, Compendia, PF uh, Popout. Mm -hmm. We're not seeing Companion Compendia. Oh, I didn't ask. Oh, did I? I thought I had asked you to. No, start. I have that one. So I have it too. Then, then it's just that one just might not be installed. I believe okay. now you've basically said every single uh, module. Oh, so there's Torch and Token Magic. Yeah, okay. I can go through my entire list if you need, because I had I even told me to install now every module I had uh, right. on here. Yeah, I'm not seeing the uh, companion compendia thing. It's called in... PF2E uh, companion is what I typed in when it came up. Oh, mine just says companion compendia. Do you guys, does yours say animal? Mine just says say animal leader. I will update my thing because I was getting like warning errors for my like version of Pathfinder 2nd Edition was outdated. Hmm. Oh. Uh, mm -hmm. I only had to install my computer for like a couple weeks, but you know, I guess that's enough for them to put on an update. Yeah, you, you generally want to update, um, constantly update um, your modules and your game systems. You want to be cautious with updating the Foundry base engine yeah. because that every update to the base engine is going to obsolete a bunch of mods. So it's been uh, I've read of from people who usually wait a few weeks after a new uh, big release, especially as it comes out. Yeah. Anyway, so um, that should be fixed. I saw the name changed after I hit the update button on the game system. Okay. Okay, so let's go over these last mods. Torch is um, when you um, right-click it, there's now a new torch button, and uh, it's uh, going to adopt the settings that you define under that token under lighting. So very quick uh, solution for dungeons. And um, even if they don't have a lighting setting, you can do it. Uh, um, let, let's, let's make this uh, a nighttime map. He has dark vision, so it, it doesn't affect what he sees. Oh, you're right. Okay. Like, yeah. I can see the torch lighting things up uh, just because like, I zoomed in a lot and then looked at the ground underneath his feet. Yeah, so if you select another token that doesn't have dark vision, that token benefits from him having a torch. Yep. Yeah, and... Uh... Okay. Yes, I see that it's... 
And also when I unselect your token, yeah, then it's clear. The difference is clear. Yep. Okay. Um, someone who doesn't have dark vision, that would be more be more obvious what's going on. Uh, the you next can just grab an iconic if you want. But well, otherwise, you know, yeah, we can bring a Miri back. Oof, my Amiri never left. She a queen. <laughs> All right, so uh, she's walking in a dark alley, and she's going to turn on her torch. There we go. So a single click instead of dealing with menus and hassle. Let's go to token magic, because I keep um, teasing it. So uh, it's a compendium. So under token magic, um, scroll all the way down to the comp uh, and you'll find token magic near the bottom. Um, oh, by the way, um, ah, I'll, I'll mention that in a sec. But token magic portfolio has a bunch of um, cool animations for your tokens. So we can have, let's say, um, Amiri took up a little spell casting and has wants to do mirror image. So we type mirror image. We now have this. Uh, you need to import it. You want to. You can import it into your item directory, I think. But the way I use it is I put it in the hotkey bar. And uh, so you drag it onto the hotkey bar, and then click. Amiri, and then activate the hotkey, and it's going to give her the visual effect. Hmm. Okay. All right, back to the compendium. Um, the very, very first one, starting with zero, 00, is a effect, quote unquote, called delete filters on selected. So if you place that on your hotkey bar, that gives you a quick way to remove all Filters is its technical word for it. And there are many, 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 many um, filters you can put on and have a lot of fun with. Um, if you have young players, they like to put on every effect they can. They do, they do that. Uh, I don't think it's possible to restrict the use of this. I could be wrong. But anyway. Uh, Oh, the, I have not gone over this, but there's a, another module called Effects Master. If you want to have animated explosions and, you know, fire cones um, and more uh, unique effects for the map, that there's Effects Master. My video, I'm not going over every mod from the video that I did, but you may want to go over my video. Um, okay, what else? Pop out. So let's open um, Amiri's character sheets. Let's say someone's playing Amiri. Uh, there is a button now at the top saying pop out. And it will only work if you are a player using a, well, the GM to, if you're using a browser to access the server. So what it does, it creates a window um, using your browsing software of only what that is. So if someone wants to have a separate window for their character sheets and have it on all the time um, to the side, they can do that with this. So it's very useful for the players. And all, all of everything in Token Action HUD has its corollary on the character sheet, I think. So you can also, they can also do um, actions from here as well. There's the action, the second button is actions. They can swing their bastard sword uh, from the character sheet. So this is some another way um, people can play. But it's a fully um, uh, operating win uh, window. So that that is a useful mod as well for especially that limited screen space. Sometimes they want to do that. Okay, uh, next mod is um, well, perfect vision. I'm trying to see what exactly it does. It's, it, it makes the um, the perfect vision mod, my understanding is that it, it conforms with the rules of Pathfinder. Then the companion mod, if um, I showed you how to make your own NP custom NPC, but another way to build a companion, especially for a home campaign, is to create, um, go to the actors directory and create an actor. 
And this is going to be an animal companion. And then go to compendiums. And you'll see it's going to be under... This is player character sheet, right? Yes, player character sheet, even though it's yep. a companion. Under items, you'll see AC advanced maneuvers, AC ancestries, yeah? Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. AC ancestries in class is where you're going to find um, your species, and you get to drag that onto, onto the character sheet. Um, you have the level of the character. You can change the level. You can make it a level 5 uh, bear in this case. And um, it automatically does all of the stats. And you get to add features. Um, AC, it's under AC feats. Open AC feats to advance the companion. Uh, and you get to make it a mature animal companion as well. And yeah, there's a more compendia. There's for, this is how you make Eidolons as well. And support benefits has its own. Uh, you can also make construct companions, add construct breakthroughs, uh, all of the special abilities that adventures get to add, and advanced maneuvers. So those are all there and pre-built. Nice. Yeah. The very last one is PDF to Foundry. And um, if you go to the main, um, the gears button, the game settings, you'll see that there's now a button, PDF importer. And that's very useful um, for, I need to demonstrate for my videos. So I'm going to bring in um, what's in a, an, ad, an adventure module. So I'm going to click the PDF importer and then choose a file. And there I will go to my beginner box um, uh, PDF of the Game Master's Guide, which has it. I'll import the PDF and uh, it will fetch all the the artwork from the PDF and the maps. And the maps will have walls pre-drawn in. And because there's, you know, labor involved in uh, that the mod maker uh, does to set up the maps, these usually aren't released right when a PDF comes out. It usually takes, there's usually a delay. Um, so there's a little uh, thing in the menu that uh, if you go under, uh, you can see which ones have already been processed by the mod maker. So I click AP, I see all the AP volumes have been processed. Not Strength of Thousands Volume 6 has not been processed. And then uh, other modules. Uh, yeah, and the bestiaries, this is where you import the bestiary as well, nice. so that all the artwork will appear on future tokens that you import. Okay, so um, it, without fanfare, completed the import. So when I go to my scenes directory, I now see the name of the adventure. And um, Menace Under Otari. And I see that only has a dungeon. It doesn't have um, the town. So, um, but if I were to open, um, I had, I had hoped that the town would be available for me to open, but that's how it works basically. And it also has the little uh, symbols, journal entries on the maps um, that give you the room information. What you would see if you're reading the physical copy of the module, it tells you the room description, readout text, it'll include, I think, a, a, a monster that you can drag onto the map, I believe. And also the monsters are placed on the map and are invisible, I believe, so that you can, that's set up also. So a lot of, uh, a big labor saving device that reminds me, I do want to tell you about map markers. So journal entries, okay. Um, on the upper right corner, uh, there's a, the button looks like an open book. All of these buttons, you can hover over them and there's a, to there's a tool tip. So click journal entries, create a journal entry. And, uh, oh, if you see in my stream, the import has made a bunch of journal entries. Um, yep. And I'm not sure they imported correctly. Okay, yep, here's all the artwork. I want to make sure that uh, Otari is here. No, I didn't see the map. Really? Where's the map? Some of them didn't come through for some reason. Okay. 
Okay, we're going to create a journal entry. Um, generic name. And what this is, is you get to type in a bunch of text and then show that text to players. This is how you can type a message and show it to players. And you can change the permissions of it so that it's something that they can always access. Like, I'm running Tomb of Annihilation right now, and they're finding some written clues that they want to always access. So I create a journal entry. This is, uh, what are they called in Roll20? Um, I think it is. I'm sure they're called like notes or something like that. Yeah, but this is the equivalent of that from Roll20. And yeah. um, there's different fields. You can, this is the text field. Then there's image. Um, you get to attach an image. You go, also, this text thing um, all has its own editor. You can insert images in here. You can insert tables. Um, create hyperlinks. There's something that Roll20 can't do that you can do with this. Yeah. You can drag the note onto the map so that the players can double click on it to open it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I was going to get to. And um, oh. no problem. And then source code. I don't even know what that is, but very, it's a powerful tool. <laughs> and so this is how. Um, default sheet. I'm actually not sure what this is about. Your source code and related to a document like this, and I think, ooh, is it HTML code? I don't know. It's, or JavaScript. It's basically a text viewer. I know JavaScript is uh, active for the hotkey yeah. bar. JavaScript and HTML are very common in web development, so okay. yeah, probably one of the two. It looks like the tip. It looks like typical HTML stuff. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And then, you know, so this is how I show images to my players as well. And um, I believe they do not see the title of the journal entry. I'm not sure about that, um, which is a concern for me when I show a monster picture. I believe they do not see the name of the title, the name of the, of the journal entry. OK, so ASDF, let's put it on this map. So I just click and drag it and put it on the map. And the players, I believe, see it. Um, OK, and there's a special, f you have to um, drag and then click update. Yeah. Update map note for it to stay there. And then um, that automatically puts you, if you, not if you notice, you have been taken out of token controls mode. You're now in journal notes mode. So your players need to be, I believe, they need to be in journal notes mode to see this. And so you could put things on the map that they can see, and which is very useful if you have a picture that's the map of a town. And, um, you know, if they'll have descriptions of places in the town. Um, Recall Knowledge, um, on his channel, he shows how you can make, um, one of the actors that you can make is a uh, loot actor, which, I believe can turn into a functional shop um, and you get to put, you know, have your journal notes be attached to an actor um, and have a shopkeeper's picture. I saw him do that on his um, on his playthrough of Abomination Vaults. It's cool. So yeah, that's uh, everything that I had on my list. Nice. Yeah. That goes very thorough. Yeah, so I think I that's mean, extensive. I'm feeling a lot more comfortable. Yeah, yeah. I'm glad. Uh, a lot of this is old hat for me, but I, I have to think this is like, yeah, I'm glad it's helpful. And uh... I'm going to stop recording now. OK, so no other questions, right? Yeah, no? uh, you have three hours of video on my end to go through. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm excited. I... Yeah. I'll be like, yeah. I will probably rewatch the video at some point. <laughs> oh, Honestly, so parts because I'm not oh, going yeah. to remember everything. Oh, I'm going to wait for the timestamps to be like, crap, wait, I need to change this setting. What was that again? Where's the stupid <laughs> yep. video? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, good. But it was very helpful. Like, I have a basic idea of how it works now. So yeah. Great. Okay, good. I think this is going to be a nice video for a nice resource for folks. Okay.